The first week in June 2023, the weather forecast predicted a long spell of hot, sunny, settled weather. Too good an opportunity not to head round the islands and sea lochs off the west coast of Scotland. My difficulty was in choosing where to go. Head north around the Ardnamurkin Point and follow my nose. Or head south past the Corryvreckan Gap and take it from there. As I couldn't decide, I decided to do both. I'd just keep going for as long as I could. Decision made, I set off at 6am in the early morning tide from Tinault, heading for Ardnamurkin Point first. I happily went down Loch Etiv at a steady 16 mile per hour cruising speed. I had peace of mind my car and trailer were safe in the drive and not abandoning the shore front, which meant I could stay away as long as I wished and not worry about them. I was going on my own as then I didn't need to worry about others, although I did inform my daughter and my elder brother of my plans and promised to keep them updated in progress. I enjoyed a smooth sea crossing from Lochetta to a small lighthouse, before skimming happily up a mirror smooth sound of Mull, the gateway to the islands of the north. It was lovely seeing familiar sights again as I felt the feeling of freedom cruise through my body, which this form of travel gives. No traffic jams or roadworks to delay me. In fact, the sound was even empty of boats at this early hour and soon I was passing Tobermory, the main town in the island of Mull. The Ferris, which is a Northern Lighthouse maintenance boat, was the only other vessel I saw as I crossed the sea heading for the start of Ardnamurkin Point, and I couldn't have asked for a better passage in the soft and rough water. Soon the lighthouse appeared, and behind it I could clearly see the islands of Rum, Egg, Muck and Canna, with a mighty cool in the sky, a blue haze on the horizon behind them all. In the ten mile open sea crossing from Ardnamurkin to Egg, I accidentally disturbed a floating raft of gullimet, which took to flight forming a spectacular murmuring as he went. A truly wondrous sight to see when all alone in the open sea. And before I could count a hundred birds, I had travelled the fifty odd miles from Tinault to the island of Egg, and it had taken me just shy of four hours. I passed a pier at Glamersdale and landed in a little sandy bay to the north of the harbour entrance. I carried my gear ashore and set up tent. I then had a coffee before saying, No more coffee for me, matey. I'm going to fly my aeroplane. So I launched a drone for an overhead view of my surroundings. And this is what it saw. Just a quick glimpse, but I'm sure you will agree I landed in a little piece of paradise. I set up camp in a lovely meadow of short green grass covered in daisies. And although there was no one else to be seen, I felt as if I was being closely scrutinised by the locals. As it was such a lovely afternoon, after a bite of lunch, I decided to do a tour around the island. My boat, of course. The prominent feature of Egg is its rocky hill, standing 393 metres above boat level. 
It was formed almost 60 million years ago and is what is left of the volcano lip that formed the island. And over to port lies the lovely island of Muck. There are one or two reefs to avoid before the coolant on the island of Rum appear to the west. Going down the sound of rum, the magnificent cooling of sky now fill the distant horizon. The massive sea cliffs of Biddy and Boydach now dominates Egg's coastline. And although the sound of rum looks very tranquil in such a calm blue sky day, I have met some of my roughest seas here, so do be warned, it's not the same when the winds blow and the tides flow. I'm now turning a corner into the Bay of Lay, a stunning sandy beach where I can seldom land due to the big rollers that hit the sand, but on a day like today, landing would be a doddle. I anchored the boat in three feet of water to make sure any rogue roller couldn't leave it high and dry in the shore. I had only one thing in my mind now. No more touring egg by boat, matey. I'm going to fly my aeroplane. I can't think of a better way to capture the scale of this stunning sandy beach and there were only two people on it in such a glorious warm sunny day, myself and a lone walker. Two other boats lay at anchor in the bay, which helped me to portray the Caribbean Blue Triangle, a magnificent place to be in such a lovely day. While watching the control screen, I felt I was in a dream, as the drone showed the seagull-eye view of this wonderful place. And then it was back to the boat for a seal's eye view of the coast, as I was still only halfway around the island. I paused to see if the boat wreck was still stuck in the cave, and so it was. She is a puffer jenny who sank here in 1954 and a storm later swept the rusting carcass into the cave, where she has been ever since. Arriving back at Glamisdale, I decided to park the boat in the shelter of the harbour. Access is only available around half tide or more, but as I had heard in the forecast, gusts reaching 30 miles per hour were to arrive the following day, which meant I'd be landlocked anyway until we passed. It didn't bother me the slightest, as I had planned clambering to the top of the school of egg then. I celebrated such a wonderful day with a brew dog then decided to fly my aeroplane again. A different perspective with the tide in. I was soon very aware the drone was upsetting some seabirds, 
which I presume were nesting in the grassy outlet beside the boat. So I kept my flight short and low and as far from them as I could. I spread my pool over out in the sand so I could land on it without fear of getting grit in the propeller motors. After a quick tour around, they made it circle round me before landing again. I didn't want to lose drone number two to a bird attack, nor did I want to upset them needlessly. As it was still too early for bed, they took a short walk to the part of the harbour I think of as a boat graveyard, and it was much more bird friendly. They didn't harass the drone. And then it was time for bed and day one was done. The tent started to flap during the night but when I got up in the morning it was blowing a steady force three so I could have left egg if I wished. It stuck with my original plan to walk up the skewer. My boat was perfectly safe regardless how strong the wind became. It was now drying out in the falling tide and wouldn't be afloat again for another six hours. It's around a five mile return walk to get to the summit of the skewer, so I kept a slow but steady pace. I took my time to stop and smell the flowers, mostly bluebells and wild garlic. The first part of the walk is along a dirt track road in the shade of a lovely wood. When the wood ends, the moors begin and offer the classic view of this magnificent hill. I paused to let a lamb called number 15 cross my path, then continued on my way. I didn't bring the drone as I wanted to travel light, and besides, the ever-increasing wind would have blown it away. Because of the sheer cliffs in this approach, I have to continue walking along the side of the skewer until I reach a short gully scramble near the far end of its rocky wall. It made my head spin a little when I first reached the ridge, before getting used to the exposure of the sheer drops. The views were well worth the effort of getting here, as I continued to walk the length of the skewer to reach the cairn in the summit. Until finally this now weary man walked to the top and touched a cairn. It's the fifth time I have stood here, and perhaps because of my age I told myself, enjoy the moment Donnie, as it's the last time you will stand here. I sat in the summit for a good half hour, slurping from my water bottle and scoffing the picnic I'd carried in my bag. Yep, I was a happy man. 
I admit to falling fast asleep, totally exhausted my return to the tent, as the wind swept up white waves in the sea. I chilled for the rest of the afternoon, but in the evening, as the wind started to drop again, I took a short stroll round to Kildonan Bay to fly my aeroplane. And finally it was time for bed and day two was done. My plan was to leave Egg in the morning and meet my brother Douglas in Loch Nevis, which will be continued in part two. Thanks for watching. (laughs) 